Today I'm going to show you what's inside of your steering column and how it works to control your car. Now your steering column consists of your steering wheel airbag, the steering wheel, the turn signal and wiper switch, as well as the ignition switch. Then at the bottom here we have the steering column, followed by the intermediate steering shaft that goes to the steering rack. Now the steering wheel has two main mechanical devices. The first is your turn signal switch and the second is the steering lock. Now the ignition switch will lock the steering wheel in place when there's no key and when I insert the key and turn it, it'll unlock the steering wheel so I can move it. So just to demonstrate how the cancelling feature works on the turn signal, if I signal to the left, make my left turn and then straighten the steering wheel, you can see that it cancels by itself. Now I'm going to disassemble the steering column. I'm going to first start by removing the airbag and then once I unscrew the center nut, I can pop off the steering wheel. Now this here is called the clock spring, so I'm going to remove four screws that hold the clock spring on, and then remove the clock spring. Now the turn signal and wiper stock are held onto the steering column as one assembly, so I'm going to remove the screws for that. And now I can remove the turn signal and wiper assembly. Now the remaining part of the steering column is held to the dashboard by these four bolts. And now I can remove the steering column from the dashboard. And here we've got all the steering column parts laid out. We've got the airbag, the steering wheel, the clock spring, the turn signal switch, and the steering column with the steering lock. Now starting with the steering column at the bottom here, we've got the intermediate steering shaft, and that has two universal joints on it, and that allows the steering column to be at a slight angle to the steering rack. Over here we have the body where it mounts to the dashboard, and then we've got the ignition cylinder and ignition lock. Now the ignition cylinder and cylinder lock is held on by two security screws. That's what the security screw looks like. And this is what the ignition switch looks like once it's removed. If I remove the key here, you can see this little tab that pops up. And that's what's responsible for locking the steering column in this spline inside of here when you turn the steering wheel. And you can see when I insert the key and then turn it, this tab will retract and that will allow the steering wheel to rotate freely. Now the ignition switch itself has a number of different modes. When I insert the key into the lock position, this switch here will go to the chimer to remind you that you've left the key in the ignition. And then when I turn it to the accessory position, the lock for the steering will retract. And then I can turn it to the on or the start position and that will be picked up by this electronic switch here to go out to the starter. Now this solenoid activates to prevent the key from being removed in case you've left the transmission in any other gear other than park. Now there's two screws that hold the switch on at the back, I'm going to remove those. And now if I pop the switch open, you can see we've got some contacts on the inside of here. Now what we've got inside of here is a bunch of little springs and then we've got a torsional spring on the inside here and that's what keeps this locked into a certain position when you turn the ignition switch. Now inside of here you have the contact ring and that will contact each terminal depending on the position of the key. Now I'm going to remove the key lockout solenoid and now if I remove that you can see this is just a little plunger that will activate with this solenoid over here and that will push this thing down to lock the key into place. Now I'm going to remove the key detection switch. You can see that when I insert the key here that moves this little tab that will move the switch in to tell the computer that your key is in the ignition. Now this solenoid will also activate when the vehicle is on so you don't accidentally pull out the key while the car is running. You can see when I push the plunger down here and I try to remove the key it doesn't go but if I release the plunger it will allow the key to be removed. And in order to remove the key barrel from the housing there's this little tab here on the side that I depress and then I turn the key and then the whole thing can be released from the barrel like that. Now the little lockout pin here pushes a pin on the inside of the ignition cylinder here which will engage with this cam at this position preventing it from turning so you can't pull your key out when in gear. So to demonstrate how the key lockout solenoid works if I got my finger squishing it and I put power to it you can see that it forces it out and that will force the pin inside of the ignition cylinder to push in. You can see this little tab here jumps up when I insert the key and that's for the key ignition switch. When I push the key it's allowed to rotate and when I pull it out it can't rotate at all. Now I'm going to remove the snap ring. Now the key cylinder is held on by this cap here which is riveted to the housing so I'm going to have to grind this off. And now I can remove this cover and now I can remove the key cylinder. Now the way the key cylinder works is we've got these tabs here on the side that will lock into two grooves, one at the bottom here and one at the top and normally that will prevent the key cylinder from turning without the correct key. As I've got the in and out action going here you can see how these tumblers are moving up and down according to the teeth profile. Now if I choose to remove one of these tumblers here you can see what the profile looks like for the key to be slotted in. Now this side here is unique, we've got two separate tumblers on either side and you can see there's a spring for both. Now the profile of these tumblers as well as their position inside of the cylinder are what determine the key combination for this key. 
Now you are able to rekey these ignition cylinders by simply moving around the tumblers in the correct combination. Now the way the steering lock works is we've got this cam profile here and when you rotate it, it will actually push down on this tab here which will push down the steering lock allowing you to turn the wheel. Now the steering shaft itself is pretty solid. This one does not have the tilting feature but if it did it would be up here and you'd see another universal joint. Now some steering columns are designed to be collapsible where they'll collapse in a crash instead of pushing it against the driver's chest. These are the splines where the steering wheel bolt into and we've got a C-clip here. And with the C-clip removed, I can pop out the shaft from the housing. Now on the bottom side we've got a sleeve bearing and on the top side we've got a roller bearing. Now this is actually a collapsible steering column so when a certain force is reached this will snap and it will collapse saving the driver from getting punched in the throat. Now I'm going to hit the steering shaft with a hammer to see if it will collapse. And you can see it's now in its fully collapsed state. Now here we have the turn signal and a wiper stock assembly. Now just for simplicity I'm going to remove the wiper stock so we can do a video on that later. Now over here we have the collar which is connected to the steering wheel and the clock spring and that's got this little tab on it that's responsible for cancelling the signals. And inside of the turn signal switch we have this white tongue here and as a signal to the left you can see as that tongue kicks out and then when I rotate the collar here the tab on the collar will come and hit that tongue and boom cancel the signal. Now as I remove the combination switch here you can see that's the little white tongue for the turn signal and this is the collar here that moves with the steering wheel to cancel it. Now they call this a combination switch because it also turns on your headlights and high beams and sometimes your fog lights. Now here's a closer look at that tab mechanism to cancel the signal. As I turn it to the left you can see I can move the steering wheel to the left as much as I want but as soon as I start turning the steering wheel to the right it'll just cancel the signal. And it moves the tongue in the opposite direction for each side that I signal. Now I'm going to start disassembling the switch by removing the covers. Over here we have the electrical contacts that will take power to each part in the circuit. This is the electrical part of the turn signal circuit. When I move it, it will slide over and cross two terminals to turn your blinkers on. This is the high beam part of the circuit that will move back and forth to turn the high beams on and that will correspond to pushing these terminals up and opening or closing the circuits. Now I'm going to open up the cover here for the turn signal switch. So here we have the turn signal. It's got this little pin on it here that locks into those grooves and that will lock it into the left, right or center position. And here we have the tongue. It's got this pin on the back here that will ride inside of this cam profile here and that's what moves the turn signal to one side or the other in order to cancel it. And inside of here we have the spring loaded cam for the high beam lights. Now I'm going to pop off the end cap for the headlights. And you can see inside of here, this is the switch that will move around to turn the headlights, tail lights, or put them in the off position. Now if I remove this cap here, you can see that I've got these steel balls that have springs on them that give this some spring tension so they lock into each position. And then on the bottom here we have the contacts that will glide on the contacts for the tail lights and headlights. This is the clock spring and it's basically a long ribbon cable on the inside that allows the steering wheel to turn up to five turns from lock to lock. Now normally it will carry data cables for things like cruise control and audio controls as well as the airbag and horn wires. And now I'm just going to pry this open. This is the ribbon cable. This is where it connects to the steering wheel side. And this is where it connects to the wiring harness in the vehicle. And it's a pretty long cable. Now sometimes these ribbon cables can break and cause your airbag or wiring harness to stop working. And this here is the steering wheel. It's got a metal frame that goes all the way around and the center of it here is beefed up to hold the force of the airbag. Now this one is coated with that soft rubbery material that's on the dashboard. Luxury models will actually wrap the entire steering wheel in leather. Now I'm going to cut off the bottom of that steering wheel to get that sporty D-shaped look. Well, there you have it. I now have a no bottom steering wheel that should give me a little bit more feedback. Now inside of the steering wheel we've got this tubular steel that's hollow that's coated by a thick layer of this spongy material. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making the steering wheel assembly on your car.